concerned about continued injuries. We have to be concerned about water that's not safe to drink. Uh, and those are big public health challenges that often get overlooked. Often get overlooked. Often get overlooked. No one wants or expects disasters to happen. Yet each year, many are affected by earthquakes, hurricanes, and tornadoes. While people worry about many things after a disaster, there is one thing they often forget, because it is all around them. After a disaster, water can be scarce or unsafe to drink. But you can be prepared by storing clean water in case of an emergency. Because a disaster can strike suddenly, you may not have time to store clean water. But there are some unexpected places around the house you can still find clean water. One place is the water heater. The water heater contains between 40 and 60 gallons of drinking water. To get the water, first unplug the water heater or turn it off using the circuit breaker. Then attach a hose to the drain valve on the water heater. After attaching the hose, open any hot water faucet in the house. Let the water run for a little bit to remove any sediment that may have accumulated at the bottom of the water heater. Water in the toilet tank is also safe to drink unless chemicals have been used to treat it. The water pipe contains drinking water as well. To get the water, turn on the faucet in the highest place in the house. Then drain the water from the lowest faucet in the house. While it may seem like a good idea, do not use the water bed as a water source because the water has most likely been treated with chemicals. If you still need water, it will have to be purified. Before boiling the water, filter it using a water filter or clean cloth. Once filtered, bring the water to a rolling boil for at least one minute. To eliminate the flat taste after boiling, let the water air out and then swish around before drinking. Believe it or not, the sun can be used to purify water. To start, find a clear plastic or glass bottle and fill it up with the clearest water you can find. Leave the bottle in direct sunlight, preferably on a highly reflective surface, for at least six hours. If the weather is cloudy, leave the bottles in the sun for two days. Because this method can take time and is dependent on the weather, consider using other methods in the meantime. Household chlorine bleach can be used to purify water. Do not use bleach that does not contain chlorine. Check the label for the amount of chlorine. Typically, household bleach contains five and a quarter percent chlorine. If the amount of chlorine in the bleach is around five percent chlorine, use two drops per quart or liter and eight drops per gallon. After using the chlorine bleach, let the water stand for 30 minutes. The water should have a slight chlorine taste. If not, add the same amount of chlorine again and let it sit for 15 minutes. If the water has too much of a chlorine taste, expose the water to the air for a few hours or pour between two clean containers several times. Like chlorine, iodine tincture can be used to purify water. First, read the label and make sure it says 2% iodine. Apply 8 drops per liter or quart, or about 28 drops per gallon. Iodine purification should only be used as a last resort, because continual use over a few days will cause health problems. With water being so essential for life, it's important to have a good supply. But no matter how you get your water in a disaster, the important thing is that you stay calm and use common sense. Make sure to ration your water until help arrives, which can be anywhere from three to seven days, or in an extreme disaster, longer. We believe that the levees in Jefferson Parish, with the tidal surge that is presently forecast, will be topped. We can expect our community to be significantly underwater and for a number of days.
kommer igen här. 